Okay, we have a really interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of square root of x over x squared plus one, all squared dx. I had this problem sent to me in the comments by Sable8172, and I was glad to get this one for a few reasons. One was, I've done one really similar to this recently, so I knew exactly how to go about it. And when I get requests, I'm actually pretty lazy, so it's good if all the work is done for me in advance. So to get started with it, I want to compare it to the problem I did in the previous video. A little while back, we had the integral of zero to infinity, and it was dx over one plus x to the 2024. And it may seem like these problems are pretty different, but you'll just notice we can kind of manipulate this a little bit. Like if we write it like this and we say there's some exponent on it, well, in this problem, the exponent's just one. But in our problem here, we've got something in the numerator. Well, we could also do something here. Like we could write this, we could write the numerator here as x to the s minus 1. And in this case, we're just saying the s value is 1. And so as it turns out, there's one formula that covers integrals in this general form. We could actually, this 2024 doesn't really matter. I could just call this something else. Let's just call this a here. And so what I want to do is let's derive the formula for this thing. Just keeping in mind that you still need to be sure that the integral is going to converge and that all these values are going to be nice. And so what we can do is let's just find a general formula for this thing right here, noticing that in our problem we just have a is going to be 2, b is going to be, no, b is also 2 on here. And then for this s value, for the s value to work on this problem, s is going to be just 3 halves. Okay, now we get started with this. We want to do first a u substitution to clean it up. Kind of unconventional here. So we're going to do u not having the exponent. We're going to do this as u equal to 1 over x to the a plus 1. And then before we substitute, let's first solve for a. So let's take the reciprocals on everything. So if we have x to the a plus 1, we're going to have this equal to 1 over u. Subtract a 1 on both sides. And then take the... 1 over a power on both sides. So this is going to cancel out. And so solving for x, we just have x equal to 1 over u minus 1 to the 1 over a. But actually, I want a common denominator in this. So for 1, let's write this as u over u. So cleaning this up, we end up with just 1 minus u over u to the 1 over a. Now from here, let's take the derivative on this to get our dx value. So first, it's gonna be power rule. So we're gonna have one over a times this whole thing. Then the exponent becomes one over a minus one. Then we need quotient rule on this. So derivative of the first thing, this is gonna be like a minus one times the denominator. So we get minus u minus, bring this thing back. Derivative u, that's just gonna be a one there. And then and then we're just going to have the denominator squared, and this is going to be with a du. Now cleaning up this numerator, the u's are just going to cancel. We're left with minus 1. Let's just take that and bring the minus sign all the way out front, and then we can clean up this whole mess and just call it a 1. And so even though this whole thing is a real mess, we're still going to use it and go ahead and substitute. So first, updating our bounds, when you plug in infinity in here, the whole thing goes to 0. You plug a 0 in here, that's just going to be a 1. Now for x to the s minus 1, we just want to take this to the s minus 1 power. So this is going to become 1 minus u over u. Combining exponents here, we can write this as s minus 1 over a on this. Then for this whole denominator here, I can write this as u to the b. And then for the dx, I think I'm going to need some more space. So for the dx, let's take the minus 1 over a out front as a constant on here. Then let's just basically copy all the other stuff down. But then we've got the same base here, divide in the u squared, I can write this as u to the b minus 2 up here, get rid of this. And then here we've got the same thing, different exponents, we can combine these, add the exponents, but let me do this, let me do it kind of carefully. So for this one we have s to the a, I'm going to break it out so I can write this as s, I'm going to write this one as s to the a minus 1 over a. And then we're adding this stuff, so it's going to be plus 1 over a minus 1. But these two cancel out and give a zero, and so the whole exponent here is going to become just s to the s over a minus one. So let me just rewrite it with this in our exponent on this thing. But now let's use this minus sign here. We can just flip our bounds, clean that up so we're going from zero to one. 
And then we've got the same base here. We've got the U and the U here. Let's combine these. We can break this off, divide this. You bring the exponent on this and then subtract it from here when we divide it in. So when we do that, subtracting off this exponent, this is gonna become minus S over A. Minus times minus is a plus one. We can clean that up in a second. And now over here, we just have the one minus U on this. And then let's just clean up this exponent. What we can do is just reorder it. We'll have B minus S over A. One minus two, that's just gonna be a minus one. So let me just write it this way. You can see there's kind of a lot of number crunching in this or algebra or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm not sure, this is maybe not the fastest way, but this is a way to get the general formula. So for like some types of these problems, you might be better off doing straightforward methods, right? Like, I mean, it could be just like, you could just have one over x squared plus one, then you're just gonna use the arctan formula. But this is the way with a little more work that we get to the more general formula. But actually at this point, we're starting to get somewhere because what we have right here, this is actually gonna be the beta function. We're on it, the inputs on it for our formula are gonna be this right here, the S over A, and this B minus S over A. So in the formula, we can just call this one like the Z1 value, we can call this our Z2 and go right to a formula on it. So what's gonna happen, we still have to keep in mind we've got the constant out front, one over A. Then with the formula, we're gonna have gamma of S over A. I think I'm actually gonna go out of order. It just, it's gonna look a little better this way for me, I think. And then here we'll have the other one, gamma of Z over two, so this is gonna become gamma of B minus S over A. And then in the denominator, we have the sum of these two, but then the S over A is canceled and we just get gamma of B. And this right here, this is gonna be our general formula that we can use on this thing right here. But after all that, let's get back to our problem because this is what Sable requested. And so we have, we determined that in our formula, we're going to plug in all these values. So let's do that. So for one over A, that's just gonna become one over half. Gamma of B minus S over A, Let's see, S over A is gonna be 3 fourths, right? So B minus S over A is gonna be 5 fourths right here. And then gamma of S over A is just gonna be this. We're gonna have gamma of 3 fourths. And then gamma of B is just gonna be gamma of two. For gamma of two, we have this formula that are related to the factorial. If we have gamma of N plus one, this is the same thing as N factorial. Works well if this is an integer. So for gamma of two, we can say this is the same thing as one factorial or just one. That goes away. We have this other formula also for gamma of n plus one. We can say gamma of n plus one is the same thing as n times gamma of n. Well, for our five fourths, for gamma of five fourths, using this second formula, what's gonna happen? Reducing this by one, we get one fourth gamma of one fourth. So let's put this back in the formula. For the one fourth, let's take that out front multiply times one half, and so now we have here one eighth, gamma, one fourth. Let me reorder it again. See, I probably shouldn't have reordered it the first time. I don't know, but let's write it as gamma three fourths times gamma one fourth. But then here, what happens is these two numbers add up to one, which tells me we can use Euler's reflection formula on it. So we have three formulas in a row, but it's a useful one. So for gamma of one minus C, times gamma of z, noticing that works, right? You subtract one fourth, if z, is our, if z is one fourth, this is three fourths. This is gonna be the same thing as pi over sine pi of z. So using this, we have one eighth in front, plugging in our z is one fourth, so this is gonna become pi sine pi over four. Sine pi over four, we can write that as square root of two over two, but then I can cancel two with eight and get a four here. And so for my final solution, we just get pi over four square root of two. Now, a couple things on this. I mentioned that I had this other problem where we had um, x to the 2024 plus one. So in that one, the b value is one. And so that goes away there. It actually goes away here too, notice that. So in that other one, when b is one, what happens is now you have one over a. I think this came up in the comments too in that other video, that it's, it gets a little simpler because then you have this situation when b is one. But then notice that this part right here is set up perfectly for the formula we just used, or there's reflection formula, so this can be sine of s pi over a. But keep in mind, there is a lot of restrictions on this formula. There's a lot of places where you're gonna have problems because like right here, for example, sine can be zero in a bunch of places. If sine zero, you're dividing by zero, that doesn't work. 
Same thing with A, you can't have A be zero, because then you're dividing by zero there. With all this gamma stuff, gamma is not defined for negative integers. So there is a lot of places where you might run into problems. You still need the convergence on your integral. So I don't actually know all the restrictions on this. I didn't go through it before. So let me know in the comments if you know exactly our restrictions on A, B, and S. One thing I mentioned before is that this very simple integral, this actually matches the form, right? We have S equal to, we have just S is one, A is two, B is one. So with this formula, what happens is you end up with one half gamma of one half times gamma of one half, but gamma of one half is just square root of pi. So you put this together and you get pi over two. Okay, there you have it. Thanks again to Sable8172 and thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.